Mickey waits outside a house while listening to music. He opens the front door and Ben screams that they need to go. Gunshots are fired and they run out of the house as something growls inside. They travel together with backpacks, a bat, and a gun. There are no people around because of the zombie apocalypse. Mickey wins $1,000 on scratch cards and is cheered up until Ben reminds him that it's now worthless. They were baseball players when the zombie outbreak began and play catch to pass the time. They hike through a dense forest and explore a cabin they find. There are no zombies, so they gather supplies, including fishing equipment. Mickey insists on sulking with headphones on instead of engaging with Ben, who teases him often. Ben keeps count of how many zombies he's killed. Mickey hasn't killed any. Two zombies wander into the forest, and Mickey gets angry because he thought they were safe in the woods. Ben dismisses him and says they still have way less to fight in the forest. They find a car and kill the zombie inside. They're happy to find out it works, so they pack their belongings in the trunk and drive off. In another house, Ben searches for zombies and supplies as Mickey sits on a bed. It's his girlfriend's home, but she didn't make it. He takes some of her music, underwear, and perfume. Ben gathers more things from the garage, and they fill the car with blankets and pillows so they can camp out in the car. Mickey wants to stay there, but Ben says no. He compares them to sharks, who are ultimate survivors, who keep moving. He also reminds Mickey that the last time they stayed in a house, they were trapped for three months before being able to get past the zombies surrounding them. They head back into the woods. Mickey's got his headphones on and isn't responding to Ben, so he sneaks up on him pretending to be a zombie. He laughs at Mickey being scared and says the headphones will be the end of both of them if the volume isn't turned down. They test walkie-talkies they found and are pleased it works. Suddenly, they hear people talking. They accidentally tuned into the communication frequency of a place called the Orchard. They refer to each other by name, so Mickey uses their names and asks for help. He's told to stay off this channel and that they don't have room. The strangers stop talking over the radio as he begs them for help. I know that these are the first people that we've heard from in months. Ben isn't sure what to do, and Mickey argues they need to find the first people they've heard from in months. The orchard sounds organized, but they're clearly not welcome. Mickey doesn't like moving around all the time, even though Ben does. It's been days, and Mickey's still trying to talk to one of the people in the orchard, Annie. Ben teases him, saying he has a crush on her, and probably believes she's a gorgeous, tough, post-apocalyptic dream girl. He says he's a realist, while Mickey's a romantic, which will get him killed along with the headphones. Mickey says Ben's the only person he knows who can walk all the time and gain weight. Ben says he's the only person Mickey knows, period. They explore motels and apartments while Mickey searches for people they heard on the radio. One of the doors let the zombies out. Ben and Mickey start arguing as he hides in the car. Ben has to kill the zombies, trying to attack them because Mickey's too scared to do it. Ben goes fishing and has a great time washing in a mountain stream. Mickey is scared when he wakes up to a zombie that used to be a young woman weakly trying to get him in the car. He's safe and makes the choice to jerk off while looking at her boobs. He's interrupted by Ben killing her, and he laughs at Mickey for being turned on by a zombie. They're on the move again and find a nice house. Mickey insists they stay the night because they'll be fine, and the only reason they were trapped for three months was because they didn't know what was going on. Ben agrees to stay. Mickey settles in but can't find his headphones. Ben has them and will only give them back when they leave the house. He insists that the only way for him to feel safe is if Mickey isn't distracted. He loves music, but has to be on alert for both of them because Mickey keeps trying to hide from their reality. There is a beautiful mural on the wall in the house, and Ben rambles on about how much he wants to visit the peaceful place it depicts. Mickey gets ready for bed and looks at a picture of his girlfriend before trying to talk to Annie again. He doesn't know how much longer he can do this and is about to give up when Annie responds. She asks him to let her go because the orchard isn't what he thinks it is and they'll throw her out to the zombies if they knew she was talking to him. 
gotta let this go. You understand? He says that living in a secure place with enough supplies is better than living like a rat in a cage as they've done by staying in the car. He won't let it go as he has nothing else. She asks about Ben and he explains that they were on the same team but never hung out in the same circles. They hardly knew each other when the apocalypse began. Annie tells him to change the radio channel for his own good. Ben listens to music and gets drunk while leaning against the mural. He hears a noise and stops dancing. He's tense as he grabs a gun and walks out of the house. The following morning, Ben looks at Mickey and puts a bat next to his sleeping friend. He goes outside and has a smoke while watching the zombie he kidnapped and tied up. He leads his prisoner into the house and shoves it into Mickey's room before locking the door. Mickey begs to be let out, but Ben insists it's time he killed his first zombie. Things go quiet, so he opens the door and congratulates Mickey who attacks him. He runs away as Ben strolls after him while laughing. Mickey is dazed as he stumbles away from the house. He tells Ben about talking to Annie and that she made him let it go. He starts crying. Ben softens and suggests he come back to the house to get cleaned up. He relents and they walk back together. They're playing catch near their car and he tries to cheer Mickey up by saying they'll find another girl out there. He does a silly dance and plays a game that cheers Mickey up a bit. Mickey learns how to fish and wears his headphones less. He and Ben spend most of their time talking and joking as they travel. They find an apple orchard and play baseball with the fruit. The car is low on gas, so they find an abandoned car and try to steal fuel. Mickey realizes the car is warm, meaning it was on recently. They call out for anyone, but Ben gives up and goes back to stealing fuel. The driver of the car surprises them and holds Mickey at knife point. Just give me the keys and I'll let him go. Just calm down, okay? He introduces himself as Jerry and says he needs to travel a long way to see his family. The people to whom the car belongs will find him if he doesn't keep going. The people after him promised a car in the spring if he worked through winter, but they lied. Ben puts his gun down, so Jerry lets Mickey go. Jerry gets into their car, but Ben has the keys. He makes a run for it and Ben shoots him. Mickey's upset that he's killed a living person. Ben doesn't understand why Mickey's upset when Jerry was ready to kill him a few minutes before. A truck drives up and they're on edge. The woman in the truck says they're simply collecting the car. Ben lies and says they had to kill Jerry because he'd been bitten. She asks if the man said anything about them or where the car came from. Ben says no and that Jerry sounded crazy talking about his family back west. The woman insists Jerry was a thief and is about to leave when Mickey asks if she's Annie. It's you, isn't it? Annie? It's me, Mickey. She freezes and shoots Ben in the leg and shouts at Mickey for not letting her or the orchard go. The duo is being held at gunpoint when she demands the keys and throws it into the field. She apologizes and leaves. Mickey can't find the keys and it's getting dark. Ben teases him about the girl of his dreams and concedes that at least Annie's attractive. It's dark and Mickey hears strange noises. He wakes up Ben and they turn on the headlights. A pack of zombies are moving toward them. They can't make a run for it because Ben's injured. They switch off the headlights, but it's no use. The zombies surround the car and weakly paw at the window. Mickey puts his headphones back on, but can't manage to drown out the groaning. Ben opens the sunroof and shoots some zombies. Mickey believes the only way to escape is to hotwire the car, even though they've tried and failed to do so many times. Ben blames Mickey for the keys being thrown and Annie shooting him. Mickey wonders if the zombies will go away, but they both know that won't happen. Ben makes cynical small talk by trying to calculate how many days they can survive with the amount of water they have in the car. Mickey remembers when they were trapped in a house for three months and if they can escape in the same way. Ben says they don't have enough space for that. Mickey grumbles about the constant sound annoying him. Ben says it's soothing and naps. 
Mickey nails blankets and sheets to the windows so he doesn't have to look at the horde of dead faces outside. They open tins of food and save the juice to drink when they are out of water. Ben eventually gets angry with the constant sound outside the car, and Mickey teases him. They get drunk to celebrate what is possibly their last night alive. They have a great time playing games and talking about the things they wish they had with them. They end the night by shaking hands. The following morning, Ben encourages Mickey to fight through the zombies and find the keys. He's told not to come back if he can't find the keys. Mickey promises to come back. Ben waits for ages and is relieved to see his friend get back in the car. Mickey's quiet for a bit before revealing he was bitten. He begs Ben for help, but Ben stays as far away as possible. He points the gun at Mickey and orders him to get out. Mickey begs to stay, but Ben shoots him in the head. He screams and spends ages sitting in a daze with his dead friend in the car. He speaks into the radio and tells the people from the orchard about when he and Mickey were stuck for months at the start of the zombie infection. He says he didn't make it because of Annie. They escaped from the house by opening a door and having all the zombies pile in while they ran out the back door. He's going to try that method with the car now. If it doesn't work, he'll kill himself. If it does work, he'll kill all of them. He puts on Mickey's headphones and prepares his escape.